Hey guys, this is Production Music Live, and today I picked up an old project file here of myself, and um, it's many years old, and I actually imported it into Ableton 9.7, and I was just looking to clean up the project a little bit and see if I can still work with this beat here. So um, it's very laid back, and uh, we have a couple of elements, and we have a lot of elements that are not even used. So let's Let's first stay in this part here and I'm going to command L loop this area. Well, or let's let's loop this area here. Okay, so there's no beat. So here's um drums so I'm calling this part drums because we actually have a couple of elements playing here and it's just kick snip and shaker and it's our deep premium volume one kick here out of the first package And we have another drum rack down here. Well, and we're playing this pattern. So these two elements combined. What is on the master? It's all off. It's actually still, if you save something in Ableton 9.2 and then load it up in 9.5 or 6 or 7, you can upgrade it and then you will get those new filter controls here. we we'll quickly undo this. Um, and we activate it. We don't have those 24 or 12 decibels controls. And if we do do that, we can like, increase or decrease the filter slopes here. So this is one of those differences. Just putting it back and there's like there's this mastering chain and it's all off so we're just having this utility here putting back a lot of gain for now. And um, also we have this is that a really a guitar plug here? That's oh, the FM8 wet marimba. That one sounds really nice because also because of this Toro verb here. up highs, a bit of saturation. This is from the audio effect saturator, warm up highs. And this is a mid side EQ here. So we are removing a little bit of this low end here in the middle. See how you can push it in the back of your stereo panorama. Great mixing tool if you want to like get rid of stuff in the middle. And on a side we're increasing a bit in the, in the high end. And a bit of com uh, sidechain compression here to the sidechain track. And I still want to roll off a bit of uh, low end, so I'm putting in another EQ8 here. Let's put it back in the mix. A 
right because our bass oh look at this so this is really still a very messy idea project here so um high shelf bring this down leave room on the bass and also put in the sidechain compressor so compressor put into sidechain mode input from sidechain up here nice and warm bass out of the mini mooc arturia ku sign Sorry, David Augusti kind of bass, and let's combine it with this plug. Oh, you know, let's call this wet red marimba here. It's not really a guitar. bit of room down here for the bass. This is very interesting. It's actually, I think I made this with Ableton Push and um, I kind of put in a scale here. I go into this part and I hit Arm MIDI. And I'm going to my push and I, and I kind of select a scale called, what is it called? Hiroshi, this one. This name here, and, um, and then we we'll go in here. We can actually see what we're playing. Now we can just jam along. Super nice atmosphere with um, with the scale. I'm just hitting those notes on the on the push here. So maybe you make you see what I'm playing here. But well, let's create a new video clip here. This is the shortcut. I just do, oh no, where is it? This is the shortcut I just used. Still need to go to the right track. So here we are playing on this track. upper part off here what a nice atmosphere so what do, what do we have? We have C, D, D sharp, and now we have G and G sharp. And we have C again. So only those. Well, it's five notes. One, two, three, four, five. So powerful. Or if you just have very little idea what I'm talking about and you want to learn more about this, you can check out our course on harmony and chord progressions. Where we're actually learning how to make use of these scales and chords. 
and write our own chord progressions and melodies. And the sound is from Natural Flavor. It's an Ableton sound, it's built in. In the Ableton version I just used this upper operator here. That one is playing sine wave 4 and sine wave, uh, sine wave normal. And then there's a ping pong delay. And not much else going on. Actually, we could do something here, put an EQ on and roll off some low end. And now these two elements play along together. Um, this upper mallet here, I think that's the same instrument. It's also a natural flavor and it's also the upper operator. And it already has a low cut here. Sounds just nice. So we are always playing only notes from this Hiroshi scale, C, G, C and D sharp here. more here. Let's go systematically from top to the bottom. going on here. How about the bass? So this vocal here This one is a sample, just a vocal sample. Can get rid of this frequency shifter. And this multi-band dynamics is just working like, a, like an EQ here. So we are boosting a bit in the highs and in the mids and we're not boosting in the low frequencies. And then we have this warm reverb, warm long, six seconds long. Let's set this to a high mode. Oh, we have two reverbs here. Crazy. So there's Toro verb. And both are six seconds long. Is that really necessary? Let's put the wet up here. I think one reverb is enough. Getting rid of this one here. And let's put an EQ8 here and see if we can move that even further into the back with mid side. Very interesting, really moves to the back. So let's see the context here. Oh, there 
is something without a side chain. So let's activate it here. better. Does that one have a side chain here? It's not activated. Okay. Always have to have some gain reduction going on, else it's not really doing anything. Oh, that's a bit too much. Getting rid of the doubler here, whatever this was. It's from an old computer and I don't have all these, I have most of the VSTs, but not all of them. Let's take that a bit down here. Just a little jamming, so I really like this almost um, random jamming here. And um, how about the bass? Is that okay? I really like the attack on that bass. It's very subtle, but it's existent. Too much sidechain on these um, on these melody parts. It sounds weird when you don't play the kick like here. So this is a pad. Cool. Um, massive. Square, square. A bit of bright noise. Reverb. How many voices? Three. And a bit detuning here. EQ8. Does that one sound with mid side? No, that one sounds better. Looks 
like I forgot a note here, but I, I forgot to delete it, but it sounds actually nice there. Not sure if you even heard that one. So most of these elements are out of the Premium Volume 1 and um, it's quite a complex pattern. It's not too crazy though, we're basically always playing 16s notes. So you see just the velocities of those shakers are varying and of this one a little bit as well. It's like emphasizing on the first note here. And um, just want to take it down a little. I don't find it. Oh, in the beginning. Okay. Now, is that bass too loud? clean up a bit of all the stuff. We are not using any pianos. I think they just copied the stuff together here from other projects. And we are not playing any guitars and all that stuff here. I'm not sure what that one was playing, so I'm keeping that. Info, white noise, risers. Come on, let's, let's just go. And um, this one doesn't seem to do that much. And that was the same pattern. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need that one. This one is a copy. Okay, just a slightly different version. Yeah, that one sounds a bit nicer here, so we are keeping that one. I'm leaving the other one in here anyways. It's a very tiny project in this case because we have all those drums and drum racks and we don't have like 20 drum tracks here, as opposed to most of the time in other projects. And um, well, it's quite easy to get an overview here. I'm just saving this one. And now let's play around with the master channel here. We have, um, we have our typical mastering chain. But um, 
let's get rid of all the stuff here and let's look for an EQ8. Put that one into a steep and into mid side mode. And actually, on the side, we can cut off even more up to 100 here. Your ear won't perceive any stereo below like 80 hertz. And um, glue compressor. We're leaving a bit more headroom here. So let's go down to 15. Catch peaks. Let's use the catch peaks preset. So short attack, short release time, and high ratio. MB um, Let's go to one of those uh for some resonances around those uh, muddy frequencies and I'm actually going to put this EQ here. But nothing crazy, just um, let's put L2 on here. And I want to get rid of this uh, boxy element here um, from the kick. Thank you. 
always a bit tricky. Um, you shouldn't actually do that. Well, when you have your limiter on and you're still going back and mix stuff, um, that doesn't really work. It's resulting mostly in a downward mixing spiral. You will be taking bass out and you're like, oh no, my kick is too loud now. And then you're taking the kick out and you're like, oh, my claps are too loud now. And then you're taking those out. And it's actually easier to like take the limiter off, mix everything, and then just, you know, apply these things slightly, not as much as I just did it here. So. Let's keep this session here just a little bit of cleaning on this project here like the fun part is really the scale like this um, um here you can make songs out of like those chords just those little power chords here Super nice, and then playing that with something like this natural flavor here uh, with this operator with the sine waves, very nice. And also, if you have the FM8, for example, take a look at this um, wet marimba patch, and also like this Tor verb is a very good plugin. Very nice reverb on the Toro verb. Also, this mini Mook bass here is really nice. Very warm. Well, not much. It's really, it's really not that many elements here. And just mix that together with a couple of our deep premium samples. And that's just, you know, this little jam session here. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little session here. Feel free to subscribe to our channel and visit us on productionmusiclife.com, our website that is supporting this YouTube channel here. And I hope to see you next time.